We are uh, glad to be here, just excited to be able to come and gather together. I'm still looking forward to the day when the middle section, this bare spot, gets filled back in. I know where several of those people are at, and we're looking forward to them, to them being able to come back. Uh, but we're glad to see all of you here this morning. Uh, we're just uh, overwhelmed by God's goodness uh, when we don't deserve it. He blesses us uh, in, in ways that we don't even expect. And uh, Today we want you to turn in your Bibles, if you will, to Matthew chapter 15. Uh, Matthew chapter 15. And have you ever had a meal and you're eating your piece of whatever it is and there's just a little... Have you ever scraped the bowl? Dwight scrapes the bowl. Now I want to tell on myself, when I was a kid, before they told us that eating... It was like death about to happen to you. Cake batter, before it was put in the oven, what was left in the bowl and on the mixer? I ate it. I ate it. I got, I got witnesses there that we, they ate it too. You know, it, it, you just, you, you didn't have to say, I didn't have to share, I know I was an only kid. I didn't share with nobody. <laughs> I got it. You know, it was mine. You know, but sometimes you, you just do everything you can to get that last bit of that taste, the scraps you want. Well, the thought we want to leave with you today is a question, just the scraps, or as I should phrase it in a question, just the scraps, just the scraps. Matthew chapter 15, verse 21 uh, for those who may please stand in honor of the Word of God. Matthew 15, verse 21. Uh, when Jesus left there, he withdrew to the area of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came and kept crying out, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely tormented by a demon. Jesus did not say a word to her, his disciples approached him and urged him, send her away because she's crying out after us. He replied, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came, knelt before him and said, Lord, help me. He answered, it isn't right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Yes, Lord, she said, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Jesus, then Jesus replied to her, woman, your faith is great. Let it be done for you as you want. And from that moment, her daughter was healed. Now you may say to me, God bless uh, his word this morning and put his words into our mouth. As we continue to look at the term image bearer, uh, image bearer, we're, we come to this passage of scripture in Matthew 15, and we see Jesus and the disciples have withdrawn from the crowds. Uh, they've kind of gotten away from everybody who was following them and, and kind of catch a breather. Jesus often pulled away by himself, uh, but he often pulled away with just his disciples too uh, to instruct them individually or as a group apart from the crowds who were following him uh, to be healed, to be fed or whatever. Well, of course, word uh, got out where he was at. And this woman says she was a Canaanite. So we'll look at this, just the scraps, just the scraps. Mercy for a Canaanite? Now, let me remind you, in the Old Testament, the children of Israel came out of the land of Egypt. God commanded them to destroy, to annihilate the Canaanites. The Canaanites were a grossly pagan society. Uh, they worshiped anything and everything almost under the sun. They, they made their children pass through the fire, which meant they protect, they protect, took of child sacrifice. And there were a nation, nations of nations, different nations of these Canaanite people, and they were just grossly wicked. God had given them compassion and mercy for many hundreds of years as the children of Israel were in Egypt. 
from about 70 something people until the time that God brought them out, a million and a half, two million, every man that number was, God gave those Canaanite people 400 something years to repent of their sins, and they never did. God was compassionate. Don't ever tell me that God's not compassionate. He is greatly compassionate uh, to everybody and anybody. But we find this woman, and Matthew calls her a Canaanite, which meant that her and her daughter had lived amongst paganism. And we know from the study of the scriptures that the children of Israel had not annihilated the Canaanites. Some they did not drive out because they didn't think they were able to or were defeated in battle because they didn't trust the Lord. Some they made a treaty with. Uh, the Gibeonites were one of those groups of Canaanites that should have been annihilated, uh, but the children of Israel were deceived and made a treaty with them, and so they lived among them. Even though they put them into subjection, made them slaves, made them water carriers and woodcutters and all that stuff, guess what? They still had their paganistic practices living amongst them. So the children of Israel did not do what God had told them to do. But what happened, the Canaanites saw Israel's God in the temple, the tabernacle, in the temple that was later built. They saw it from a distance. They didn't partake of it. We know that Jesus has encountered Samaritan women and, and other Gentile people uh, throughout his ministry by this point in time. This Canaanite woman has most likely lived in amongst a pagan society. The demon possession of her daughter was possibly because they were pagans. And well, how do you say that, Paul? I, I can't say that for certainty that's why she was possessed. I can tell you this, God had allowed her to be possessed to work out a miracle in this woman's life and in her daughter's life. But let me remind you of this. A true born again believer in Christ cannot be possessed by a demon. It's impossible. It can't happen. Because the blood of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit abide in us. It's a safety net. You cannot be possessed by a demon if you are a true follower of Christ. Now, if you're not a follower of Christ and you begin to dig into things you should not be digging into, the occult and those things of that nature, it's quite possible that demon possession can happen. Do we believe that it still happens today? I firmly believe demon possession happens today. It still does. God's not changed what Satan has used uh, for countless generations now of people, he's still used today, and part of that, I believe, is demon possession. Oh, no believers, wicked people, paganistic people that have no room for God in their lives whatsoever. This daughter was severely tormented by a demon. Now, again, God had commanded the Canaanites to be annihilated. By all rights and purposes, should she even be alive at this point in time? No, she shouldn't. So mercy for a Canaanite? Remember, the Canaanites were also image bearers of God. Iranians, Iraqis, Saudis, Syrians, Israelites. All those nations in the Middle East today as they were in this day and time, are all image bearers of the living God. Doesn't mean they express his image. Doesn't mean that they display his image in the, as far as a spiritual sense of worshiping him and of that nature. But they were created in his image. Genesis tells us again in chapter one that God created man and woman in his image. All of us. No if, answer, buts about it. We're all created in his image. But can there be mercy for a Canaanite who should by all rights and purposes not be here in this passage? She should be, she should have never been born. By our way of thinking of it, mercy for a Canaanite. Look what happens. She comes, notice how she comes to him. Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. Son of David. Remember, in Joshua, they had defeated the people of Jericho, the people of Ai, after a little issues there. Uh, they, they, they won that battle too. The Gibeonites were terrified. And so they deceived, they came with deceptive purposes 
to make a peace treaty with Israelites. Well, they, they come, they, they, they put on old clothes, they took old moldy bread and old wine skins, and they come before the leaders of the children of Israel and tell them, we are a people from a long, 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 long way off. And we've heard about your God, and we want to make a treaty with you. See, here's, we le- our clothes were new when we left. Our bread was fresh when we left. Look how moldy it is now. Our wine skins were new when we left. Look how bad the shape they are in now. You don't scratch your, 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 your head or beard and, and wonder, how you got moldy bread? Shouldn't you have ate it on the way by now? They didn't think about that. The Bible tells us that they did not ask God. The children of Israel did, led by Joshua. One of Joshua's, one of Joshua's few failing moments. They didn't seek God's direction. And they made this treaty with the Gibeonites. Three days later, they found out what? They were their neighbors. They were their neighbors. They had heard about God. They had heard about God drying up the Jordan River, drying up the Red Sea. They heard about how Israel's God had torn down the walls of Jericho. And they were terrified. This woman here had heard by somebody, somehow, some way, about Jesus able to do something for some other people. But could there be mercy for a Canaanite? Look what happens. Verse 23, Jesus didn't say a word to her. Don't you hate that when you're talking to somebody and they ignore you? And then I go, what? I didn't hear you. What'd you say? I didn't, I didn't hear you, sweetheart. What, what, I'm, I was reading, I'm sorry. I was focused. You ever had that excuse too? You just didn't listen? You weren't paying attention? And so was Jesus ignoring her? Did he, was it, did he, had he tuned her out? Just some old woman. She's a canine woman. She shouldn't even be here now. Look what happens. <laughs> Jesus did not say a word to her. His disciples approached him and urged him, send her away because she's crying out after us. Get rid of this woman. Send her away? Mercy for a Canaanite? Send her away? Imagine, imagine the disciples, not not imagine this, this is fact. The disciples didn't want her around. They didn't want her there. Get rid of this woman. Get her out of here. She's crazy. The disciples did not see this woman as an image bearer of God. (laughs) How many times and how often has the church not seen someone as an image bearer of God? Woo, man, that hits home, don't it? How often have we just turned a blind eye instead of wearing a mask over our mouth, we put it over our eyes and we don't see that person as an image bearer of God. We don't see him that way. They didn't see her that way. Get rid of her. Then Jesus replies. Look at his reply. I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, does he say that to her? Does he say that to the Israelites? Or does he just say that as a matter of fact? I think the answer is yes to all of those. I think everybody heard him say this. Sent only for the Israelites? Jesus tells the woman as a test and also to his disciples that he was sent only for the Israelites. Now, is is that accurate? Yes, it is. Jesus' primary mission, his primary mission was to come and to fulfill the prophecies of being the Messiah of the Israelites. But we go back and look in the Old Testament, we look in the New Testament, that God had a purpose in Jesus, his son, not only to die for the Israelites, but also to die for the Gentiles as well. 
He was to pay the price for the sins of all mankind. Every image bearer of God. Everybody. But here he is, okay, he's testing this woman's faith. I'm only sent to the house. I was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. How many times have we, we taught and preached and God revealed this to you that once someone is saved, no matter their background or culture, skin color, ethnic group, uh, income level, whenever they come to know Jesus Christ as their Savior, they are adopted into the family of God and have the promises of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Am I not accurate in that? Am I correct in saying that? I'm exactly, I know I'm right. So God's word tells us, teaches us that way. But was he sent only to the Israelites? That was his primary mission. But we find him there in John 4 when he encountered the Samaritan woman and had that interaction there. She came when nobody should be there. Lo and behold, guess what? There was Jesus. He saw her as an image bearer. He sees this woman as an image bearer too. Verse 25, but she came, knelt before him and said, Lord, help me, help me. <laughs> if I ever answer you this way, you best know that I'm trying to be Jesus to you. Look what he said. It isn't right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. All right, that's a racial slur, right? He just called her a dog. You go, up to, you go up to some woman today and call her a dog and let me know how that works out for you. Husbands, call your wife a dog and tell me what happens. Tell me if you're not sleeping with a dog that night. Right? Hey, kids, the dog is home. Wow. Jesus, the Son of God. Call this woman a dog. Or did he? Or did he call her a dog? Let's read the scripture again. It is right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Now, to understand fully what's going on here, you gotta know what that word dogs means. In the Greek, and I didn't bring the Greek word, I didn't dig that out because it's kind of hard to pronounce, but we can, we can bring that out for you if you need to, but not this morning because I don't have it with me. I left it at home. But the word dogs here in the Greek is used as a term of endearment. Typically, it was used in reference to a house dog. Anybody got a house dog that really owns the house? I have one that sleeps on my bed at my feet every night. How that dog got in my house, I still don't know what happened. But she's there, and she will be there until she dies. But you know what I'm talking about, term of endearment. Your dog sometimes is more precious to you than your husband or your wife or your children. Am I right? Some of you, ah, don't, don't tell me I'm lying. Sometimes it's that way. Sometimes, sometimes the only person you want around you is the dog, right? Huh? Everybody else, get out of here. Except when the dog is licking. That's the only thing our dog does bad is she licks. Oh, man, I'm telling you what. You trying to go to sleep? Shut up, dog, or you're going outside. You know? I cannot believe I just did that on camera. My Lord, help us. I'll, I'll be 90 years old and somebody will throw that out at me right there, I think. Look what you did, Pastor. Yeah, 90 years old. I don't care then. Anyway, we know you may have a cat in your house. Term of endearment. You can use the same term for a cat, too. I know you cat people. Crazy. I don't know what you cats. Anyway. You may have a goat lives in your house. The Davis may have goats living there. I don't know, you know. You may have a pet goat. I don't know. Terms of endearment, you know. Remember that, that story that uh, was told to David? Nathan the prophet told David, this guy had a little lamb and he raised it like a daughter. Don't you think that was like a dog to him? Like this term of endearment to him? Loved that little lamb until that mean old guy stole it and cooked it for his, for his, 
this traveling guy. And Dave was infuriated at this. Sin only for the Israelites. Mercy for a Canaanite. Send her away. Jesus was testing this image bearer's faith in him. Because God had clearly orchestrated this meeting, don't you think? Remember when, when Jesus encountered the Samaritan with the whale? The Bible says he must go through Samaria. He didn't must go through Samaria. Proper Jews didn't go through Samaria. They went around. They crossed the Jordan River and went north on the other side of the Jordan River and then crossed back over to avoid Samaria if they were going to the north of the Galilee region to see relatives. They didn't go through Samaria. Jesus did. And he met that Samaritan woman there. Changed her life. And many people in town, he changed their lives too. God had orchestrated this meeting with this woman and for her daughter. Tyre and Sidon. You don't just go there. This is the paganistic place. We know hardly any Israelites whatsoever live there. The King James calls her a Syrio-Phoenician woman. Canaanite. Tyre and Sidon. All the same term. It's all the same. He was testing her faith. Someone had told her of Jesus that he had worked some miracles. What she's done is she said, no one here can help me. No one here can help me. Perhaps he can. Remember the woman had the issue of blood and she had it for how long? 12 years. Jesus was on his way to heal a girl who had, was sick. She was 12 years old and was dead when he got there. This woman had been sick for 12 years, came and touched the hem of his garment thinking, if I could just touch that, then I'll be healed. And lo and behold, she was. Do you not think Jesus had passed by that very moment for that woman? I know he had. If you'd been saved, God passed by at the right time to save your soul. At the right time to save your soul. He passed by to Tyre and Sinai at the right time to meet this Canaanite woman. And he's testing her faith. <laughs> it isn't right to the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Yes, Lord, she said. Check this faith out. Check this faith out. Yes, Lord, she said. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. The crumbs. King James calls them scraps, I believe. Just the scraps, just the crumbs. The woman agreed with what Jesus said, that he had indeed been sent to the house of the Israelites. But she said, this is how her faith, this is how she had heard about Jesus. This is where she's going to put her faith in. If you can just give me a crumb, that'll be enough. Just give me a taste. That will be enough. Enough. Why do you go to some places, and I know with COVID and everything, they don't do as much now, but why do you think when you were able to go to certain places and they had samples of things there? Samples for you to try to entice you to get more, right? To purchase that product or whatever. She says, I'll just take a sample, and that's enough. That's enough. Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. She had already been crying out to him. Notice how she had addressed him, son of David. That's a messianic term. So she's not just hearing about some crazy dude healing people, she's checked this man out. She's investigated who he is, who his claims are. She's found out all she can about him, and lo and behold, she must have been coming south as he's going north. God intersected their, their timetable for this very moment. This very moment, son of David, have mercy on me. How many times, go, that's, that's a big good homework lesson for all of you, to go through the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the Gospels there, and find out how many times we see the term son of David are used in reference of Jesus. That's, that's all over the place. And she used it, a pagan woman who God was drawing out of paganism 
to the living God called Jesus, son of David. Messianic term. Jesus then says, woman, your faith is great. Your faith is great. Let it be done for you as you want. Jesus commands his image bears faith. And I'm going to tell you today, as a born-again believer in Christ, this is what I want to hear from God. I want him to commend my faith in him. Commend it. Not condemn it, but commend it. Paul, you got great faith in me. That should be what God says about all of us, right? God said, say to all of us, insert your name, you have great faith in me. That's what God should look at us and see in us that we have great faith in him. Notice what he does. Woman, your faith is great. Let it be done for you as you want. And from that moment, her daughter was healed. Did he give her the scraps? Ha! Did he give her the scraps? The scraps would have been this. This is what the scraps would have been. The scraps would have been, she'll have a good day today. She'll have a good week. I'll make the demon leave her alone for a week. Then you come back and get right again, then I may make it two weeks. That's just the scraps. No, Jesus doesn't give you the scraps. He gives you everything. He gives you everything. Everything that we have today is from him. Every good thing comes from the Father above, the Bible tells us. He gave her everything. Now, I would like to go on in the scripture in this passage and, and find out where she went back to her daughter and then both of them came and followed him. That doesn't happen. I mean, it doesn't tell us that. We're only left to assume what may have happened to her. I, I can only look at what her faith is, son of David. Yes, I'll even just take the scraps. And her daughter being healed, I think God changed this woman's life and she became a witness for him. I have to believe that from what happened in the passage. If it wasn't, if I don't think if she had, we wouldn't have this passage of scripture in here. Something happened here. A life changing experience happened. Do you remember when God didn't give you the scraps? Do you remember the day when you got saved? God didn't give you the scraps. He didn't give you what was left over. He gave you everything. He gave you the best thing he had to offer. He gave you himself, his son Jesus. That's what he gave you. Changed your life forever, did it not? How many people do we need to tell people about Jesus Christ today who need their lives changed? They're image bearers. Mercy for a Canaanite. Yes, there was. Send her away. Don't send her away empty. <laughs> send her away full, right? Don't send her away empty. Send her away full. Yeah, he was sent for the Israelites. He was sent for me too and for you and for this woman. Do you need complete healing today? Do you need it? Maybe people watching today, you need to complete healing. You're lost and you need Jesus. You may be in this building with me today and you're lost and you need Jesus. You need complete healing. You are an image bearer of God. God created you. He breathed life into you. Gave you this day to live. God did. So that you can hear how much he loves you. Hear that he loves you. That he died for you on the cross. That he rose from the dead. You are an image bearer. And he wants to move into your life and give you a new life. A real life. Not just the scraps, but the main, main course. The best thing. There is to offer eternal life. What do you need to do? Just like this woman did. Call out to him. Son of David, Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Repent of your sins and you can be saved. You will be saved. Not just can. Can I go to the bathroom? May I go to the bathroom? Jesus, will you save me today? Yes, he will. Can I be saved? I might be saved today. No, if you call out to him, you will be saved. You will be. This woman called out to him and she went away full and her daughter was healed because she had great faith in Jesus. Let me remind you where faith comes from. You don't just pick it up at the, the temple down the street. 
You don't just pick it up at the grocery store. You don't just pick it up from, from mom or dad. You see the examples of it maybe, but great faith comes from God. Faith is a gift from him. He had given this woman this gift of faith in his son and drew her to his son. I still remember the day when God drew me to him. Mm, never gotten over that. Never don't want to get over that either. Do you remember when God drew you to him? Is God drawing you now? You're an image bearer. And by, by the term image bearer, let me add to it today. Image bearer. That means God's created you in his image. There's a, and that means there's a place in there just for him. Just for him. You know when we, and I'm, I'm going to get on food one more time, then we'll come to a close. You know when we have those dinners, we're going to have, have them again one of these days, and, and somebody makes, I, I, I'm going to, they, they, they're those eggs, those deviled eggs, and I, I don't know where the word devil comes from, you know, how we get that in the Baptist church, deviled eggs, you know. But you, they, they make that, I remember mom's got one, I think we even inherited one too, those they were Tupperware or whatever. They got the little indention, little plastic thing, the little indention, and the eggs just sit perfectly in there. Those things aren't made for anything else but an egg to sit in. Half of the egg, not the whole egg. You got to cut it in half and put the stuff all in there and doctor it all up, put a little pickle relish on there and pepper and all that other stuff you know that you do. Those little things, those containers were made just for a half an egg to sit in and then the lid go over top of it to do what? to transport that to where you're going to eat it at, right? That's all those things are made for. You don't put anything else in those containers. Just a half an egg in each little hole. I want to tell you today, every human being that has ever lived, that is living now or will ever live, has a place in their lives that only God can fill. Nothing else goes there. Nothing else can fit there. Nothing else can stay there. Only God can. Only Him. But there's a lot of people today going around, walking around empty. They need Jesus. Let's pray. Father, today we love you. We thank you for loving us. Father, we want to give you the praise and glory and thanksgiving. Thank you for your word. Take it out, God, and accomplish what you want to with it. Be glorified today and lift it up. I pray if there's anybody in our midst that's lost, anybody listening right now that's lost, God, may you speak to their hearts and convict them of their sins and reveal to them that they're empty. Give them the faith to believe in your son Jesus and simply to call out to you, Jesus, will you save me? Will you forgive me of my sins and save my soul? Father, thank you for saving me. Thank you for the promise of heaven. Thank you for this. I'm as good as a Canaanite. <laughs> I'm as good as that. I'm, I was worthless and useless until you called me. Now I'm, I'm your child. What an amazing transformation you've made in the hearts of every believer. Today, God, I pray you work miracles. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray.